-hmm. Happy New Year. So, in honor of the New Year, I'm going to make two videos today, at least. One of them uh, will be focusing a lot on the Cedar Island Ranch nonsense. Uh, and the other one's going to be a bit more general, but it will refer back to the Cedar Island Ranch nonsense. Um, so this first one's going to be the more general one. And I'm taking advantage of the fact that it is New Year's because I like to use uh, New Year's Eve as a sort of a vehicle for teaching this lesson to people. Um, it has to do with uh, something I mentioned in a previous video. Um, on two different YouTube channels, two different videos, uh, having to do with your will, your willpower and your decision maker, the deciding factor in your mind and how they're not the same thing. Um, sorry, I'm at a truck stop and I'm running my uh, generator to try to keep my refrigerator at least somewhat cool so that stuff doesn't go bad in there, using more gas. Um, because actually uh, the last paycheck that I got from uh, my piece of shit employers at Cedar Island Ranch, I, I had actually just bought a, a bunch of meat because I was um, trying to switch my cat over to a more um, raw, natural meat-based diet rather than just canned cat food because I've been told that that's healthier for them and also can be cheaper for you if you do it right. But it's not cheaper for you if you buy a bunch of meat and then uh, your employer, employers fuck you over and make it so that you can't keep that meat chilled or cold and now I smell rotting meat in the refrigerator. <laughs> Chicken gizzards and stuff like that rotting in my refrigerator and ground turkey meat and stuff. <sighs> a, lot of, a lot of wasted money. For as much money as they paid me, uh, they probably caused me to waste at least half of it because of their nonsense. Uh, during the course of my working for them. Like I said, like having to buy the extra um, camper stovetop burner with the extra little propane tanks because my propane in my RV ran out um, waiting on my last paycheck, so on and so forth. Um, having to buy more like baby wipes to wipe myself down with because I couldn't get a shower. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, so... Real, so willpower versus your deciding factor. Your willpower is not your decision maker. And this is easy to understand by thinking about New Year's Eve. What do we all do on New Year's Eve? At least in the Western hemisphere of the world. Yes, we drink and we party and hoorah, hoorah, hoorah. We also do this thing called New Year's Eve resolutions. It's a tradition. People tend to come up with something that they want to do less of or more of. I will eat less. I will drink less, smoke less. I will exercise more. I'm going to learn how to bake a cake. I'm going to learn a new language. And more often than not, we don't follow through on those decisions, do we? Those resolutions, which are decisions that we make. Well, why not? Isn't that your willpower? Isn't that your will? No, it's not. It's just a decision you made. Um, your will... Your will uh, is your deepest, darkest desire. Deep, deep down, it's what you want the most. It's, it's going to be what's coming out of your survival mind. Um, your decision maker, the, the decision maker in your mind, that has next to no power. Think of it as being like Spock from Star Trek. Okay? He's not the captain. He doesn't have any power. But he, he can make, he, he'll make a bunch of decisions. Um, he can analyze stuff. He's um, mind separate from emotion and empathy. And gut instinct. So he's pure intellect. Um, not a lot of, there's not a lot of power. There. And also, so I'm going to make another video getting into this. I won't go too far down that, that road. So when I realized that, when I realized that my will and my willpower are not the same as my decision maker, then it was like, okay, so what's my true will? What's my true willpower? And tried to figure that out, went fishing, delving into here, peeling back the onion. 
trying to find that out, not just about myself, but about human beings in general. I like figuring out how our minds work. So I realized that our deepest will has to come from the survival mind, the snake mind, it's very deep down in all of us. Our higher minds are built on it. Um, we all have it and we need it, it's necessary to some degree, the survival mind, the reptile mind. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to like, Trying to make it so, making sure that you can hear me over the sound of my generator running. Uh, I'm gonna walk away from my rig a little bit. So, um, so your will is going to be your deepest, darkest desire coming out of your reptile mind, your survival mind. That's going to be one of two monsters. It's not. It's not just one monster. Just one of two monsters down there. From what I've found. And I'll update this if I alight upon new realizations on the topic. But the two monsters buried deep down in your survival mind. And you will be operating off of one or the other. Okay? Um, at least the most. You will be more inclined towards one than, than the other. Um, one, the one monster is the little boy monster. The little boy snake monster, survival mind monster, which is entirely concerned with its own survival and um, gratifying its own ego. So uh, deep down, the ultimate, like the most extreme manifestation of that is total control. A need and a want, a desire for total control over everything in its life. Um, a total control over its mates, total control over its territory, total control over its food sources, total control over its competition. This is what will ensure its survival. Um, and this is what makes it feel safe. These, these people are typically cowards deep down inside. They, they don't feel strong in themselves. And so they are desperately eating, 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 consuming um, as much as they can, uh, going for achievements, going for power, going for material gain, going for more influence, because that makes them feel safer because they're trapped in their survival minds. They're operating mostly out of their little boy survival mind. The other monster coming out of the survival mind, and she spans from the survival mind through all the way through into the higher mammalian mind, I've found, is the mom monster, mama bear. So uh, as I said in the other video, um, re reptile mothers can actually be quite vicious defenders of their young. Um, Mama Bear is a force to be reckoned with. Like, Leo would be dead. If that were reality, what was that movie called where Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio gets attacked by a uh, Mama Bear? In real life, he'd be Grizzly Man. He'd be freaking dead or he'd be what's for dinner. All right? He's lucky that was a movie because that probably very closely looks like what a real bear attack looks like in real life. And that biatch fucked him up, didn't she? And in real life, he'd be dead. He wouldn't survive that shit. And you all know that's true. And you know, if you were there, you might, your, your little boy survival mind ego might tell yourself, no, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have made it. I'd have survived. Nah, no, you'd be dead. Um, I've seen, um, I've seen this manifest in mama bunnies. I've seen mother bunnies, um, chase snakes clear across the field. Well, after she got them far enough away from her den that she should have felt like, okay, it's safe now. It's fine. Um, but no, she, she kept at it and at it and at it and at it and at it. She kept going back for more and taking chunks out of them, taking until the snake was like, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And she's like, no, you killed some of my babies. You're going to fucking die now, bitch. Like a mama bunny got vicious and scared the piss out of a snake and fucked him up. That's how vicious and scary mama bear can be. Mama reptile monster, mom monster. She's down there too with baby boy. You will be one of those two wills. So mama monster is self-sacrificing. She self-sacrifices for the future. Um, that doesn't mean she's a puss. That means if it absolutely comes to that, she'll lay down her life for the betterment of her children for the future generation of her species. But up until that point, she will absolutely F you up. 
Like she's not gonna just it's be like, okay, I'll die, Mr. Predator. Let me die. <laughs> run, babies, run. No, she's gonna fucking fight you tooth and nail first. And then if it boils down to it looks like the only way for the babies to continue is if I let this thing eat me, then she will lay down her life and die. <laughs> but she gonna fucking fight first. <laughs> so idiots you know would look at um the self-sacrificing mama bear will and frame of mind and think that that's weak or weakness it's, it's not it makes you actually quite strong much stronger than the selfish weakling who will only ever be motivated to do what's in his best interest we also we've known about this problem since well thousands of years now um since ancient greece at least because this is the cautionary tale of Kronos, which is an ancient greek myth Kronos was the father of Zeus. And Kron it was foretold to Kronos that one of his children would take his kingdom from him. And so every time his wife birthed a child, he would eat it. He would swallow it whole. Um, so that he could maintain his power forever. And that's a cautionary tale. Uh, the past is not supposed to eat the future. The past is not supposed to um, be so concerned with its own survival that it destroys the future. It just consumes, 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 consumes its own children, consumes the opportunities for its own children, consumes the future generations of its species. That's counterproductive and that's counter to nature. And that's, that's where we get extreme narcissism from. People operating from that basic core will. If you want to achieve something, you need to convince yourself that in, in order to appease your deepest will, you have to achieve this thing. So if, if you want to learn a new language, let's say, you have to somehow convince yourself that learning this new language will appease that deep, dark will, deepest desire you have in you. First, you might need to figure out which will you're operating from. Mama bear will or a little baby boy will. That, that's, one, that's something you're probably gonna have to figure out first. And then if you wanna achieve anything, then you have to set about convincing yourself that you need to, in order to appease that will, you have to achieve this goal. That's how you achieve things. Um, if you don't do that, it's very likely you're not going to ever do anything you decide to do unless you're forced to. Um, so yeah, your willpower is not the same as your decision maker. Um, so that's what's going on with David Zainsing. He's operating from little baby boy survival mind. And it's causing him to consume future generations. Um, I am a future generation. I'm the future and David's the past. And he's eating, eating, trying to eat me alive so that he can survive. Um, Mike and Rebecca, they are also a future generation, much younger than David. He took advantage of them. He consumed them, tried to consume them um, in order to survive. This is the cautionary tale of Kronos. Hey, David, maybe you should read. Maybe you should read a little. Read a little Greek mythology. Branch out from that Bible thing. You might, you might see some patterns in all these stories and lessons that have been told in all kinds of other books and cultures and, you know, just whatever one religious uh, scripture that you're going off of. I hear tell. I hear tell that you say things are all into the Christianity. I come from a loosely based Christian family as well. So that's why um, I've seen lots of flaws in that belief system. Like I said, uh, I don't play favorites when it comes to disliking religions because they all have problems. But I'm, I'm way more familiar with the problems of Christianity because I was in some way, I was at least loosely raised in it. Uh, one of the problems being, we don't need to know anything but the Bible. Nothing. We don't have to read any other books. Nothing. Just the Bible. Really? You sure? You sure about that? I think maybe you're missing that lesson. Like, you're missing the point of the lesson. There's, there are stories in the Bible that um, I've heard interpreted as, like, this means that you're not supposed to know anything other than the Bible. And I've gone ahead and read those stories and gone, I think you're getting the exact opposite, actually, of what this, the meaning of this story is. I, think, I don't know how you're interpreting, getting the exact opposite interpretation of what you're meant to, the lesson you're meant to be getting from this, but somehow you're managing to do that. <laughs> it's, well, for example, the Garden of Eden, um, the, you know, how Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of, Garden of Eden. Some people have used that as a, as a, 
a story to relay the lesson, you know, all you need to know is what God tells you. All you need to know is what the Bible tells you, because that's the word of God. No, the lesson in that story is how, you, first of all, you're supposed to love God. How can you love God if you don't really know God? And how can you know God if, how can you really know God if God is all you know? You have no basis for comparison. You understand? So how can you really know something that it's all you've known? You, you don't know anything else. So you don't know that you should, like, why you should love God because it's all you know. So it's just, you're just essentially doing as you're told. So you don't really love God, you're just a follower. You know, in order to really love God, you have to like branch away at least a little bit and question all, the whole thing and look at, uh, you know, opposites of God or whatever, the, the antithesis and have some experience with it and then compare and contrast and go, oh, and then come back around to, oh no, you're right. Yeah, God's definitely, definitely the shit. Let's, let's go down that path then you really love God. Not when it's just all you know and it's all you just do as you're told. That's the lesson in that story. Not just, just shut up and do what the Bible tells you. You're not understanding that lesson in that story. Let me guess. Wait, wait, wait. wait. The, the preacher told you that, right? The guy who asks you for money every week? He told you that. He told you you're supposed to shut up and do as you're told, right? Mm. I'm just wondering. Mm. Anyway, Hey, David, 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 is your middle name really royal? <laughs> is it really royal? Ew. Your ego must be, ugh, gross. <laughs> my middle name's Elizabeth. That means uh, God is my oath or word, word of God. Katie Elizabeth Phillips. So Katie meaning pure or pure and virginal maiden. Elizabeth, meaning uh, God is my oath or word of God. Phillips, meaning friend of horses or lover of horses. And uh, I think I got into how horses have been um, a symbol for slaves, the slave labor class, and women for, well, forever, since human beings began making symbols um, and working with horses and, and living with horses. Uh, horses have been used to symbolize the slave labor class. So my, my name roughly translates into pure word of God and friend of slaves or pure word of God and friend of women. What is your name? Royal? Ugh. Ugh. And Saint Singh. Mm. Mm. Did you know that the devil, did you know? Because remember, I study religions. The devil is supposed to be. He was like the, wasn't he like the, the angel of music and singing? I'm just saying. He was the patron of, of the arts and musical arts, particularly, and singing. And actually it said that uh, if you really read into this sort of thing, uh, uh, the devil was made by God to sing to God. Just saying. And you're royal. Mm. I think you and I were meant to go to head, head to head with one another. Who do you think is going to win? Little baby boy or a mama bear? <laughs> this isn't a movie, David. Remember how Leo would be dead right now if this weren't a movie. Leo's lucky it was a movie. Just saying, you're gonna lose this battle, bitch. You really are. I'm gonna rally the, the slaves and the women. Ladies, ladies, oh, that reminds me, there will be a video coming up talking to your wives, the ladies in your life, and um, scolding them on how they're not doing their fucking jobs, maintaining the standards of society, because that is uh, no small way a woman's job. We're the gatekeepers of society for a reason. So we're gonna make another video getting into that. Ladies, stay tuned. <laughs> so yeah, um, your will is not your decision maker. Um, and I've seen this in families too. Um, uh, where 
it's just they you'll find one narcissist and maybe you'll track it back and then you'll find like it's, it leads to a family with all their heads up their asses I've peered in on and, and been a part of enough families um, experienced enough different families read enough psych books and thought about like observed enough of this and again was an art teacher teacher for a lot of my adult career so I've worked with a lot of different kinds of kids and worked with their parents and observed all those interactions as well um and not with my little boy snake survival mind just thinking about how can I use this to my advantage no with my mom monster mind going how can I analyze this and use this to be a better mother a better caretaker children and do what's best for the next generation of the species so because i came at it from a non-selfish point of view i have better insight into family dynamics and uh psychology than a narcissist like david so anyway so you could find whole families of narcissists where uh, they think they have great relationships i've seen this and it is scary where you'll have adult children thinking that they have great relationships with their parents and I've literally heard this. Um, I'm, I'm best friends with my mom. We have a great relationship. And, and right there, right there. You don't have a great relationship because you're best friends with your mom. You're not supposed to be friends with your parents. That violates very important parent-child boundaries. A friendship is supposed to be very different from a, a parent-child relationship, even when the child's an adult. Because a friendship requires an equal give and take of emotional support and venting of stress and so on and so forth. Um, and the giving of emotional support, it should only be a one-way street between a parent and a child, even when the child's an adult. A parent is never supposed to lean on their child emotionally. You're using them as an emotional crutch or a bestie friend or a therapist. Get a friend your own fucking age. You're not supposed to inundate your child with unnecessary stresses. So you're not supposed to be venting to them things like, uh, I think your father's cheating on me. That's not supposed to be made their problem. You're supposed to do everything you can to avoid making that their problem. Even if you have to divorce the bastard and take half, like do everything you can to make sure that does not become a problem for your children. That it's not something they have to worry about or think too much on. They should be focused on their lives. And this also goes into stuff like uh, parents who don't take care of themselves, their own health, their own physical health. This is one reason why I started getting on top of myself about eating healthier, getting more exercise. Because I've seen too many times uh, a parents getting up towards retirement age or even throughout most of their adulthood not taking care of their own health. They know better. They know they should eat healthier. They know they should get moderate exercise. They know they shouldn't veg out on the couch all night watching television. They know they should get, keep, maintain healthy sleep cycles, um, but they don't do it and their health um, suffers radically for that and deteriorates. And then now, surprise, surprise, congratulations, they've come around to retirement age and they're roughly um, like a baby again. They, now they have to be taken care of by someone. And, oh, and, and or they also didn't save um, or plan financially for that inevitability that they will one day, even if they do maintain their health, there's a good chance one day they will be so old and frail, they will need someone to take care of them. And it'd be nice if they had the money and resources to pay a nurse or someone to come in and do that rather than rely on their children to sacrifice huge chunks of their life or grandchildren to sacrifice huge chunks of their life and opportunities to treat them like they're a baby again and to come wipe their butt and feed them. Okay, how is that an adult failing to plan for that eventuality, that very likely eventuality that you will be an old, frail man or woman one day who will not be able to take care of yourself and you're just hoping that your kids are gonna be a retirement plan for you? You're not a mature adult. So it, it's, it's, so financially you should like, I think I would sooner um, have myself sent adrift on an ice, iceberg on an ice flow, uh, then make myself a burden on my children. I don't uh, see, I don't think children should be a retirement plan and you should absolutely do everything you can during the course of your um, adult years um, to make sure that you never will be a burden on them. Um, not at the expense of your humanity. That does not mean you get to go 
you get to use for providing your, for your children as an excuse to be a bastard to other people. David, just saying. He doesn't get to go like, that's what I'm doing. And that's why I'm being an asshole and, and taking advantage of people. Because I have to provide for my family. Oh, that's what you use as, as an excuse for your narcissism and your selfishness? And your inability to maintain the integrity of your humanity? If you're not a human being, if, if you can't take care of your responsibilities, like providing for your family, whilst also maintaining the integrity of your humanity, you're not a mature adult human being. You can't hack it, dude. You're failing. I don't care how many pieces of paper you have in a bank account. You're failing. Um, <laughs> so that's what you get for that, David. <laughs> Called the fuck out. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I wanted to add to this. So yeah, uh, just recall that you're welcome, by the way, you're getting like, you're getting really good education here. I'm li literally giving you lectures that come from one of the best educations money can buy and a mind that actually took advantage of it and didn't take it for, didn't take it for granted and continues to educate itself every day all the time. I didn't just go like, oh, I graduated school. Now I don't have to learn anything else anymore. Like, no, never stop learning, idiots. Um, too many people doing that too. I know everything I need to know. I graduated, I got my degree. Really? They downloaded absolutely everything into your brain during that time period? Mm -hmm. I dislike dealing with people like that. It's just, if they have to win. And so they come, they take the argument to some crazy place. <laughs> it really is like arguing with a kindergartner. Ugh. And it's even worse when that person is like a parent or a grandparent. My grandmother was that way. She's had to win every argument. She's had to. And it would be, it would boil eventually. Like as I got older, I got better and better at arguing. And I got better and better at pointing out essentially like cornering her with my words in an argument into a, a corner that she couldn't get out of. You know, she had no more excuses, none. And then, it, and then the argument on her side would just become crazy. It would just be like, and it would become childish. Well, I know what I know and you're not gonna tell me otherwise and, nah, 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 and it would become nonsensical. And oh, so that, that was some of my first experiences with dealing with those kinds of people, but I've met too many of them along the way of almost 40 years of life like wow you are that childish you can't admit to be you're that unable to admit to being wrong and having made a mistake and doing something you knew you weren't supposed to do that now you're you're devolving into a kindergartner with your with your argument I don't care I don't care if the whole world ends I'm gonna sit here and be right hmm Okay. So, and my grandmother was also one of those people who spent the last 10 years of her life li living in a recliner and eating Hershey, Hershey chocolate kisses when she had diabetes. And it got to the point where she couldn't walk anymore. Like she, did, she didn't want to walk around and get exercise. So she just let her, her, her physical health deteriorate. And then she need then she couldn't walk. And then like she needed to lean on everyone in her family, children, her grandchildren, even her great grandchildren, to even just hand her things around the room. And it's like this could have been avoided. And my grandmother was a trained nurse. She knew better. She really knew better. She knew, like, you have to maintain certain good, healthy eating habits. You have to get a good amount of exercise have to keep on top of your health to some degree or it will deteriorate and you will become a burden on someone somewhere and likely your own family so i've seen it up close and personal and not just in my own family i see it all i'd say like probably half the half the people out there of retirement age at least half of their ailments are their own damn fucking fault and it's a shame that they make it the problem of the future generations of the species and their own children and then they claim to love their children and their grandchildren it's like then you would have done a better job for yourself maintaining your health. You wouldn't, you would turn off the television and gone for a walk. You would have put down that chocolate bar and picked up a banana. 
you would have had a good amount of um, foresight into the future of how this could go very wrong for your children if you didn't maintain your health. Um, why do I feel like that? I, and I just, I see that often in families. That's why I'm bringing it up because when I see one narcissist, one like rearing ugly narcissist, quite often, again, you can trace that back to a family and there might, uh, I'm not saying the whole family been narcissistic, but it can, it's possible. It's, I've seen that. Um, but then also there will be that pattern and that behavior in that family as well is like the older generations will feel like they're supposed to lean on the newer gen. Like they, they'll, they'll feel almost it's their right. I raised them up and now it's my turn to be treated like a baby by them. Like, no, this isn't supposed to be a circle. It's supposed to be a spiral. Time and life move forward in a circular motion, but forward. It's not a straight line. It's not a straight line. Neither is it supposed to be a circle that just loops back on itself. It's supposed to be a spiral. It's a line that moves forward in a circular motion. If you pay attention to how all of life is and works, there are spirals everywhere. Spirals are the, the shit. They're everywhere in everything, built in everything. That's how pine cones form. That's how flowers form. We have spirals on our fingertips. That's how trees blow in the wind. They don't, they don't actually typically sway back and forth. They move in little spirals, in little circular motions. Um, spirals are in everything. It's in our DNA. Our DNA strands are spiraled. Think on that. You can meditate on the spiral for a bit, bitches. So there's a there's your lesson on willpower and uh, your deciding factor and narcissism for the day. The next video I'm going to make is going to be way more specifically about. Uh, well, it's going to be calling out David Saint Sing on some inconsistencies for his reasons for firing me. We're going to use the behaviors and actions of some of my coworkers um, as an example to call him out. So stay tuned. Bye. Oh, happy new year again. 2023. Let's get this bitch started. Let's see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? I'm not sure. I'm worried that it, it honestly, I, I'm always kind of worried that like we're going to have the big reset button hit at some point and then I keep going like how fast can I outrun a tsunami <laughs> pay attention to the history of the entire earth for a long time now for I don't know the what is it four billion years it's been around big things happen and shake shit up once every several thousand years maybe ten thousand years or so something like that we're due we are due we're kind of past you. So I'm like, mm, when's it coming? Please, not my generation. Please. But still. It doesn't hurt to, like, at least have one eye open for the tsunami. That's why I'm, I'm trying to stay up towards the mountains. That was part of, probably part of a little bit of my problem on the island. And even in my hometown, like, I do not like being on the shore that much anymore. It's beautiful. And I love it on, on the one hand. But on the other hand, part of me is like, I won't be able to outrun the tsunami. I don't know what I'm going to do when that shit comes. I'd rather be up in the mountains, I think. <laughs> anyway, all right. Ta-ta.